Hello and welcome back to another video of Circuit Digest. In this video, I'll show you how you can make a very compact 3.3 volt SMPS circuit like this one. So if you have been following our channel, you would know that we have built a large number of SMPS circuits here. So this is, these two are the modules which we built previously. So this is a 12 volt SMPS with 15 watts of output power. This is a configurable SMPS, meaning the output can either be a 3.3 volt or 5 volt, which can be set using this jumper. And now we have built a very compact 3.3 volt SMPS, which can provide an output, output current of up to 1.5 amps. So the idea of building this module is to have a very compact SMPS. As you can see, this SMPS is rated for 3.3 volt with 1.5 amps of output current. And the size of this SMPS is very small so that you can use it for space constrained products that may be any IoT product or any of your applications in which the size of the SMPS is a problem. The idea was to have an SMPS board which is almost the same size of these Highlink modules. Most of us would be familiar with uh, Highlink modules. So as you can see, we are just a little bit bigger than these Highlink modules, both in terms of height, breadth and also the width. But the good thing is this is a custom design so we can uh, make this board look more rectangular, perfect square, circle or whatever it is as the needs of your application. This type of SMPS can be used to power any 3.3 volt system that is based out of your ESPs like this ESP82601 or Node MCU, ESP32 or even an Arduino Pro Mini that operates on 3.3 volts. So yes, there are a lot of applications for this kind of SMPS, especially when it is compact like this. So let's see how to build this one. In this video, I'll show you the complete circuit diagram for this PCB and I will also explain the circuit and show you how you can fabricate your PCBs and get this done. But before we get there, it is important to mention our sponsors PCB Way, who are not only the fabricators of these shiny green boards but are also the sponsors for this video. PCB Way provides high quality and cost effective PCB prototype and fabrication services. They are well equipped to handle advanced and standard PCB designs and can also provide assembly stencil and PCB assembly services. They are known for their shorter lead time and customer service and also supports the maker community. So do consider giving them a try for your next PCB. Coming back to our project here, let us just move all these components away and only focus on our new 3.3 volt SMPS board. So the circuit diagram for this board is shown over here. So as you can see, the circuit is pretty simple and all the components should be easily available except for the transformer and the inductor over here, but we'll get back to that later. Now, as always, let's start our circuit from our input side, which will be the 230 volts AC. Over here, you can see the AC to DC converter section, which takes the line and neutral and converts it to DC, which will be used to switch our transformer. So uh, if you haven't noticed it earlier, this SMPS board is a double side board. You can see components on top as well as on the bottom side over here. So starting from here, uh, you can see the line and neutral marked over here. So on the back side, you can see the line and neutral marked over here, which is for the 230 volt AC input. And over here, you can see the ground and 5 volt mark. So this is the ground rail and this is the 5 volt rail, sorry, 3.3 volt rail, which is used to provide the output. Now over here, you can see the bridge rectifier, which takes in this AC voltage and converts it to DC. And further, this DC is provided to our switching IC, the TNY284TG. So I'm not sure if you're able to pick that on the camera. But this is our uh, main SMPS switching IC, which is the TNY284DG from power integrations. Now let us go back to the circuit diagram over here. So I just explained the AC to DC conversion section. And there is also a resettable fuse of uh, 10 ohms, which you can see an NTC. Uh, 
you can see the NPC over here. Now uh, moving on, this DC is provided uh, to the TNY284DG IC as I told you earlier. But before that, it passes through a capacitor to filter out any uh, noise in the AC to DC conversion. That is to basically filter out ripples, which is very common. Now this capacitor is rated for 22 microfarads, uh, 400 volts. Now what we have used here in practice is actually 22 microfarad and 450 volts which is also fine so the idea here is that this dc voltage over here has to be switched through this transformer using our tny284dg switching ic so as you can see the high voltage side is going through the primary side of our transformer and then it moves in through this ic and then gets close to the negative rail so this ic acts as a switch as you can see this terminal is connected to the drain and all the source pins are joined together and is connected to the negative rail so only if the switch closes there will be current flowing through the primary side of the transformer so what will happen is based on the switching frequency of this ic uh, the transformer will be switched and uh, based on the switching based on the switching happening on the primary side the secondary side will output a voltage now the reason why this SMPS circuit is very compact is because of the switching frequency of this IC. This IC here can switch with 132 kilohertz of switching frequency. So the higher the switching frequency, the lower can be the size of your transformer. So if your IC is not capable of switching in high frequencies, you have to compensate it by increasing the size of the transformer. Now, apart from that, we have a few more uh, components here. Let us quickly look into that as well. So here we have our uh, protection Zener diodes and D5 diode. This is used to protect our switching IC from any reverse voltage from the primary side of the transformer. So as we know, transformer's primary side is just like an inductor. Whenever it is turned off, the voltage or uh, the power stored in the inductor will try to flow in the reverse direction. And if that reaches our switching IC, it might damage it permanently. So we have a Zener diode and this diode arrangement over here, which will prevent any reverse voltage reaching our switching IC. And then we have another pin called UV, which stands for under voltage, which will measure the primary side voltage and decide if the switching should take place or not. If the primary side voltage is very low, it means the input AC voltage is low and hence uh, the IC should shut it down, uh, shut down itself and do not do any switching. So the resistors here R1 and R2 are called sense resistors, which is used to sense the primary side DC voltage. Now on the board over here, you can see these two resistors R1 and R2 here and the protection diodes, which is the Zener diode and the UF1JB can be seen over here. So this is UF1JB and this is the D5 Zener diode, which is SMBJ160A. So apart from that, we also have an EMI filter capacitor, which is C4, which you can see over here. So this is our EMI filter capacitor, which is used to filter any EMI noise on the primary side. Now, we also have another capacitor here, which is C2, uh, which is a bypass capacitor. And this is used to provide the power which is required to operate the IC. Now that is on uh, the primary side, we have discussed the primary side of the transformer. On the secondary side, we again have a scotchy diode. Now since we have switched it, there will be uh, the output side on the, the output from the secondary of the transformer will not be pure DC. So it has to be rectified again. So we are using a scotchy diode and this scotchy diode can provide up to 3 amps through it. So we'll be needing up to 1.5 amps, which is not a problem. And then uh, we have two other sections. One is a snubber circuit, which is formed by R3 and this 680 picofarad capa sorry, capacitor. And we have an LC filter. Now, a uh, snubber circuit is always mandatory on the secondary side to protect this uh, rectifier diode. And the LC filter is used to smoothen the output DC voltage. Now we have an inductor here and a capacitor. Now the capacitor should always be a low ESR, otherwise that itself will act as a load. So 
yes we have a snubber circuit here and an lc filter here and as always uh, whenever we do a uh, rectification we use a ripple capacitor ripple filter capacitor uh, which here it is a 1500 microfarad 10 volts capacitor as you can see here it's a 1500 and we have used 16 volts which is well and fine so that is it on the secondary side now another important thing uh, on this circuit is the feedback side now we have to tell the ic whether we have reached that 3.3 volts on the uh, output side so that it can switch accordingly now the feedback section consists of uh, three important components one is this optocoupler pc817 which you can find over on the back side over here and then we have a potential divider arrangement and the TL431. Now, most of us should be familiar with this IC TL431. It is very commonly found in all SMPS circuits. Uh, we can see the TL431 on our board over here on this side. So this TL431 provides a reference voltage of 2.45. So what basically happens is we take the output voltage from here and provide it to a potential divider. So this potential divider will provide 2.495 volts if there is 3.3 volt uh, across these two terminals. So you can use the potential divider calculator and check if the resistor values are 2K and 6.1K then the output voltage is 2.495 then the input voltage will be 3.3 volts on these two terminals. So with that, uh, we will check if we have reached the required 3.3 volts. And if yes, then we will send a signal to the optocoupler. The optocoupler is used to isolate the primary and the secondary side of our circuit. And based on the signal from the optocoupler, our switching IC will control the switching frequency and make sure the output voltage always stays at 3.3 volt. So I have just gone through the rough working. If you need a detailed working, you can check the link at the description of this video. And while building this SMPS circuit, there is a very good chance that you won't find these transformer or the inductor. For example, the inductor we have used is 3.3 micro Henry. So with a current rating of 2.66. So it might be hard for you to find an inductor off the shelf. So you, have, you would have to make a custom transformer and a custom inductor. To make a custom transformer, uh, we have already made a video and an article on how you can build a transformer on your own in home. So if you're interested, I will also leave the link for that article in the description of this video. Now over here, we have a few more details, which is the IC spin out, the TN y284dg ic spin out is shown over here and the switching frequency is shown over here now the explanation for both can be found at the link in the description of this video now again if you have a vendor who can make this transformer for you you just have to give the transformer specification sheet which can which tells you how many turns is made on the transformer say for example uh, our transformer over here the specification is shown here it is made with the e13 bobbin and on the primary side, we have 179 turns with a 36 AWG copper wire. And on the secondary side, we have planned for 3.3 volts. We have five turns and the copper wire's thickness is 24. So you just have to give this to your transformer manufacturer. And uh, apart from this, there are a few more details that he might need. The specification sheet for this transformer can be found at the article, which is linked in the description. So once you give this, you, your vendor will be able to make this transformer for you. Or again, as I told you earlier, you can check out the article in description to read this data sheet yourself and make your own transformer. So that is it guys. The, once the circuit is ready, uh, you can proceed with uh, your PCB design. Now again, the complete design file for this PCB, the Gerber file can be found at the link given in the description of this video. All the materials which you will ever need to make this board can be found at the link. Uh, in the description of this video so that is it now uh, we know how this uh, transformer uh, how so that is it now we know how this smps circuit should work now what we'll do is we'll take it to our test bench power it up and see how it is working
Now this is our experimental setup. As you can see, we have our SMPS board over here. It is already powered by this auto transformer. We have our multimeter connected here. So this will show the input voltage that is being provided to our SMPS. Right now it is 220 volts AC, as you can see here. And on the output side, we have also connected a multimeter and you can see it is currently outputting 3.29 volts which is almost 3.3 volts so now what we will do is we will adjust the input voltage and see how the output voltage responds to the input voltage so i'm just going to decrease from 220 volts let's go all the way to 110 so as you can see the output is still being regulated to uh, 3.3 volts let me go down to 90 to show you that so yes even with 90 volts input AC the output is regulated at 3.3 volts now let me go all the way up to 220 and let me go slightly above 220 let's do till 240 and as you can see our SMPS is still holding and it is still regulating 3.3 volts so now let us uh, change the setup. Uh, what I have here is a load machine which we built in another project. So this is our Arduino based load machine. So we will connect our SMPS to this and use this resistor as a load, power it and we'll see how much current we are able to draw from our SMPS board. Now I have changed the testing setup. Again I have my auto transformer uh, powering our SMPS module over here. But this time I'm not measuring the input voltage. Instead, I'm using this multimeter to measure the output voltage from our SMPS circuit. And this multimeter is used to measure the output current from our SMPS circuit. So people who are following us regularly might remember this board, which is an Arduino based load machine. So we can basically set the amount of uh, current that should be drawn from this SMPS board and based on the set value of current our MOSFET here will switch and dissipate that current through this resistor so now let me just uh, power on the module so the SMPS is already turned on and the output voltage is currently 3.298 and so there is some current already showing like 0.027 amps but uh, uh, let's ignore that for now and I'm going to increase the load on this machine and as you can see as I increase the load you can see the current drawn from the SMPS is also increasing and the output voltage is still stable so let me just go ahead and further increase it now it's around 800 milliamps let us go all the way to 1 so at 1 amps you can see the output voltage from the SMPS is about 3.28 let me increase further so my load machine here doesn't support more than this but uh, even this is a good value so for even 1.2 amps you can see the output voltage is around uh, 3.28 from the SMPS. So that is it guys this is how the project works hope you enjoyed watching the video if you have just uh, provide a thumbs up button for this video and also subscribe to our channel for more interesting SMPS circuits. Okay thank you bye bye.